Hey, how you doing there again, folks? Me again, of course, Brandon Wenzel. Come back at you, another offering off my sampler platter. <gasps> Yesterday, folks, I played very serious videos I've been doing for a lot longer over there, trout food and drink items. I eat stuff, I drink stuff, then folks, I'm gonna talk about stuff. I'm gonna let you know all that you need to know about hopefully delicious stuff that time I'm doing this, folks, I'm not gonna lie, we're headed back to Peru. Yay! But we'll get into that. Folks, super simple format. I'm going to go over there and try out food and or drink items for you. Whilst I'm doing so, I'm going to yammer on about it for a bit. And whilst I'm doing all that, I'm inside my truck. And whilst I'm doing all that, folks, I promise this is the last one. I'm wearing a super cool shirt. Folks, when I wear super cool shirts, I like to highlight super cool shirts. Super cool shirt I'm wearing today. Boom! It's my Dragon Ball shirt. The classic Dragon Ball, the one before Z, the one that is my personal favorite. I really, really like Dragon Ball. Uh... If you're not familiar with it, it's a Japanese anime, I believe, from the late 80s. Uh, of course, it's subsequent series, DBZ, Dragon Ball Z, definitely kind of stole the show, really became, like, the, the bigger, like, international, you know, hit. For myself, personally, I've always been a really big fan of the original one ever since I got into it, even though I started off with Z, like most people. I just, I've always really loved the humor, the, like, the adventure aspect of it. I like the fight scenes more, if I'm entirely honest with you. It's like, uh, you know, and to be fair, there's some really good ones in Z2. Mostly towards the, the beginning, I feel. Some of the later ones are still good, too, but I don't know. It's, once it became all about beam weapons and stuff, it was just kind of like, eh, eh, okay. But I do really like this. Um, it is probably my favorite work from Akira Toriyama that I've had exposure to, but I know that he does a lot of other stuff besides just the Dragon Ball stuff that at some point I really need to get into. But anyway, folks, what am I trying for you today? What are we doing here? Why are we headed back to Peru? Well, folks, I just got through reviewing some... I gotta get the name of it, because otherwise... Some Arroz Chaffa Mixto, which is Peruvian fried rice. Go watch that review. And, folks, you know I'm not just going to get one thing. That would be crazy. Why would I only get one thing? So, folks, we're back to, boom, Peru Caters, which is the name of the establishment. And this is, let me open it up. Try to open it up. There we go. This is the Spaghetti Con Mariscos. That is how I'm going to pronounce that. I apologize if I butchered it. It is M-A-R-I-S. C-O-S, Mariscos, which is consists of Peruvian pasta, shrimp, octopus, calamari, veg, and spices. Basically, it's seafood spaghetti from Peru. It looks like this. <laughs> they are big on the seafood with the Peru, man. Like, a lot of their items were, like, you know, celebrating seafood, which is cool because I don't get to do seafood all that often on, these, uh, on the, the sample platter. So... Let's give it a shot. I'm really interested to see. This is the second spaghetti, international spaghetti dish that I've done in just a few weeks. Because I also did, I don't have the review up at the time I'm doing this. But I went to a Filipino place and they also had spaghetti. So, good on fucking, yeah, man. Got some nice looking shrimp. Look at that shrimp. Wow, it's tasty. That's good shrimp. Thing with seafood, you want it to be tasty, but you don't want it to be, you don't want it to taste overly fishy. If you do, that means it's not good seafood. But, let's get some pasta going, make this whole thing. Funny thing was, I actually was thinking about reviewing this one Italian place near me and getting some pasta while I was there, uh, but it just ended up like, it was one of those things where like, you could order online from them, which I wanted to do, because I was like, I'll just get it for takeout but the Grubhub did not have their complete menu but you couldn't order directly from their website because their website looked like it was like from like 1998 pasta that's the business right there that is fantastic Got the octopus in there. I love octopus, by the way. I just feel a little bit bad with octopus because it's like octopuses are super cool. And like they're kind of, you know, they're intelligent and stuff. And it's like, oh, maybe we shouldn't eat them. But they're so good. 
<laughs> That's a terrible defense, I realize. Man, I really like this. It's a much lighter, like, type of spaghetti. Like, it's not, you know, like, heavy home style. Like, with the, the Filipino stuff, it was good, but it's very home style spaghetti. This, it's much more kind of, you know, sort of like actual Italian style, I guess. You know, it's a little bit more... It's a little bit lighter. That is fantastic. Like, seriously, this is... Even just the pasta by itself. First of all, it's cooked perfectly. It's nice. It's got... <clears throat> excuse me. It's soft, but it still has, you know... A little uh a little fight back to it and it has this like really interesting flavor to it I mean it's some sort of like I don't know if it's just a sauce or it's like they just because they cook the seafood in it or what but it has this like the pasta just by itself has like this kind of seafood taste to it and it's like, it's just, I've, I've never had, I've never had a pasta quite like this. Definitely not a spaghetti. It tastes fresh, it tastes vibrant, it's super duper flavorful. This is, this is some excellent, excellent pasta. Like, I think... I have probably only ever had pasta better than this a very small handful of times. And it's only been when I've gone to, like, on the few occasions, not that I went there of my own volition, because I sure as shit wasn't paying. Uh, you know, but when I've been invited out on a handful of occasions, like for weddings and stuff like that, to, like, really, you know, bougie Italian places, that's about it. But, like, the level of flavor that I'm getting from this, it's spectacular. The seafood is wonderful. This is a really, really good dish. I, I am absolutely gobsmacked by this. And just like with, uh, just like with the rice, because of the vibrancy of the flavors, it doesn't taste like too heavy. It doesn't taste like it's weighing me down, even though it's definitely decadent for sure. Because it's just, man, and you get a shit ton of seafood, which you should, if you know. And I did, I think I mentioned, but maybe I didn't, uh, this was $24. So, just like with the rice, though, for me personally, it's like, look, I wouldn't get this on a regular basis, just because, again, price is a little bit much, but as a treat here and there, maybe every couple weeks or something. Oh my God. Yes. Cause that's kind of what this is for me. Or this would be something that would be great to go over there. And like, it, like when I was there, there was another table and they had like four guys over there and they were all just sharing dishes. This would be perfect for that. Split the bill on that. Oh my God. This is, this is so good. Um, and I, and I mentioned it in the previous review, but I will mention here. Uh, first of all, this review, as well as the other one, excuse me, i got to let it all figure out where it's going to live. This review plus the other one is going to end up in my Sampler Platter Local Love playlist. That is a playlist for just local establishments, like smaller places and stuff that I just want to go over there and highlight a little bit, want to experience what they have to offer. This place... Peru caters with the two dishes that I've had. This is going beyond, you know, just this singular review. This is kind of me going over there giving my, essentially my full impression of the place. They are outstanding. Seriously. The, I love that they have dishes that I'm familiar with, but I love that they put these twists on them and they bring out these flavors that I've never experienced with them. I love the setting, this cool little hole in the wall place. I love the, uh, the, people working behind, you know, the, not only behind the counter, this super nice old lady who was just, like, extremely helpful to somebody who had no idea what he was doing with the food. Um, it's just, yes, man. This is 
this kind of place is why I go over there and do these reviews. Because it's like, yeah, I can go over there and I could do fast food reviews and Mountain Dew all day. I mean, I, you know, I do. And, yeah, that's fine. And, you know, hopefully it's helpful to people. You know, that's part of the, the reason why I do the reviews is like, well, people might go over there and be like, hey, how does this taste? Hopefully my reviews will offer that. But when I do the local spots, it's even cooler for me because it's like, it's not only is it just a more personal experience, but on top of that, I get to go over there and have these great interactions and I get to discover these amazing little places like this. And it's just, it warms my heart, folks. Like frozen robotic ninja heart. It's not completely unfrozen, but it warmed it up a little bit. Now, all that said, two questions have to be asked. Would I get this dish again? Would I recommend it? Yes and yes. Oh my God, yes. I think, and I wasn't expecting this, I think I might actually like this a little bit more than the fried rice dish. I love the fried rice dish. That was fantastic. But this, for me, has taken, like, the classic spaghetti-style pasta in a whole new direction that I've just not personally experienced, and I love it. So I'm just... If I'm recommending it to people, yes. The only, obviously, the only people I really wouldn't recommend it to, if you don't like seafood. I wouldn't say that this is like an overly seafoody tasting dish, but it's definitely there for sure, even though it does taste like really good seafood, it's very fresh tasting, so. But anyway, five things before I get out of here. Have yourself a great rest of your day, spectacular rest of your week, monumental rest of your month, spend this rest of your folks, you go over there, have yourselves a truly Peru caters tastic rest of your life. I, this cool little strip mall that I'm in, there's an Italian place, there's a Harold's Chicken, which by the way, I re reviewed Harold's Chicken, there's a Peruvian place, there's a Colombian taste, I don't even, and there's a tattoo parlor, there's a dog place. <laughs> this is such a cool little spot, like, I definitely need to, at the very least, I gotta hit up the Italian place now, because I've hit up, I think, every other restaurant, but, man, what a great way to spend my day. Uh, where was I going with all this? Final two things, number one, try to bring some positivity in the world, as long as possible, it is, however, always appreciated, but, what do you do if you can't do all the time? I know I can't do all the time, here's what you can do, folks, you're gonna try not to be an asshole. Folks, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to not be an asshole. Even on days like today, when you're over here trying delicious, uh, blah, blah, blah. I was about to say intergalactic, that's not, uh, international cuisine, life can be very stressful, very frustrating, it's important we run into those situations. <sighs> Take a step back, try to mitigate the level of assholishness in our lives, hopefully do better for ourselves and for those around us. Very final thing, folks, do the thing, whatever the thing is for you, that's what I want you to go out and do. Folks, maybe you're going to go over there, maybe you're going to see this review, and maybe you're going to be like, man, I need to try out some Peruvian food. But maybe there's no Peruvian food around you. I mean, you know, I don't know where you're at. But maybe you're over there and you're like, all right, well, I need to try out some Peruvian food, so where am I going to I'm going to go to Peru. So then you get a passport. I don't know how the whole Peruvian thing works. Um, you know, but you're going to go to Peru, and you're going to have a wonderful time. Maybe you meet, you know, like super cool people. Maybe, you know, maybe a significant other little romance kind of thing going on. I don't know. But then you go over there and it's like this wonderful situation. But sadly, you know, you have to go over there and you have to eventually, you know, head back. But then you go over there and you you, you vow that you're going to return once a year during, during the, you know, the summer months. You're going to spend your time there. And you go back and, you know, it's just this thing and then... You know, then and, and you're like 80 years old, and somebody goes over there and they does like some sort of like report on you and everything. And they're like, you've been coming to this place for the past d d four decades, and then you know it's a whole thing and it phases out into like a flashback scene. I I know Stanley Kubrick. Anyway, or conversely, just try some delicious Peruvian food if you get the opportunity because damn is it good. Bye.